let's jump into this. So I'm yeah, gonna so actually that. start off and say that this was my favorite episode of One Division so far. Yeah, it was brilliant. Probably I absolutely loved it. Yeah, I it, it's I was not expecting. Like, I, I think it was rumored we were talking about last week. That, oh yeah, we're gonna get flashbacks to Salem. Mm. Yeah, I think we thing. said that. Yeah, and you know we're gonna yeah you know, we're talking about like you know, we're probably gonna get flashback episodes and that sort of thing. I wasn't expecting to go this in depth with flashbacks and to get this much backstory. It's like I assume we all had that moment of like as soon as we go back to the uh the the child their childhood in Scovia, it's like oh no this can, this is the day isn't it yeah this is that day isn't it it's like oh no and it was like, beautifully shot that whole scene oh, was yeah. so good and even just the how it just blends into silence like you don't even notice it I was watching really like nicely and then boom it just like yeah you know, that yeah. catastrophe happens and just like oh shit that it yeah. happened so beautifully done and then my my favorite moment after was like agnes just walking around the stage just be like oh the trauma like the years of like therapy ahead of you i was like bitch yeah (laughs) but it was so well done like i loved it so good it's and i think it's worth pointing out was a i'm pretty sure it's the same missile that almost killed tony yeah it's the same 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 type of missile yeah yeah is how when would it have it would have been, let's say it's an older model because Tony was hit was hit and almost killed by it in 20, 2008. Yeah. Wanda is like, let's say she's early to mid 20s in Age of Ultron. She's like, what, eight, eight here or something? Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. like, it, it's like, fifth, this is it's like. Probably the early. T- well, it's, it's after Malcolm in the middle. Yeah. Because that's Malcolm true. in the middle DVD. So it's like sometime in the mid 2000s. Yeah. yeah. Probably, yeah. It's like, it's like. Yeah, it's like fifteen years. Yeah, it's like fifteen years or so it's before. Like two thousand and five. That's my guess. Yeah, because mm, yeah, Age, Vol- Age of Ultron was twenty fourteen, right? Twenty. Yeah, twenty fourteen. Yeah. That would be nine, yeah, tw- nine years later. Well, but then she only. Oh, then she would have. Twenty. She would have been eighteen or something. It's twenty fifteen. You know. She would have been eighteen there. Which yeah. Is okay. Up with mm. sort of what they say. Yeah, because she was quite right, young yeah. when Age of Ultron happened. I remember that. All right. Well, that makes sense. Then. Yeah. So this is like it would have been the older model than the one. Killed Tony, they almost killed Tony, probably. Mm, but yeah. it's still like, yeah, it's, I, I did like that. Just seeing that, that that's just that because that's like an you know, iconic imagery MCU of this missile just stuck into the dress. So, yeah. You know, it's like, um, on the subject of that scene, but two things one is a major thing, one is just a little thing that I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the thing presented in the episode that, um, the thing presented the episode that yeah it, it reminded me of uh so that in the uh flash and the supergirl there's a big crossover that happens in late seasons where it's uh there's a musical crossover right mm-hmm. and it is set up in that spoiler alert it's set up in that that the reason that it's a musical crossover is someone's doing well there's not two spoiler rates you get you probably notice pretty quickly going into the episode someone does some mental some mental like trickery on supergirl and barry and they get thrown into this sort of perceived reality inside their heads mm. and it's a musical and the reason it's musical and the reason that it makes sense in such a clever way of it being musical is that both barry and kara love musicals grew up watching musicals so when they're put into this sort of this world that he he puts them in this world that you know j- just he creates this world for them in their heads and they inhabit it as a musical he says at one point it could have been i think he might even have said it could have been a sitcom or something like that but he says like it just it could have been anything but you guys made it a musical because yeah. that's what you know and that's what you you like mm, right and that okay. is a yeah that's a really i thought that was a really clever way of doing it and i like the same thing i've done here that the reason that everything's happening with wandavision is yeah wanda grew up watching sitcoms yeah. and that was her how she learned english to a degree and that was her perceived view of that is the perfect life mm. the perfect like the american dream life is yeah. that and what she sort of would have wanted growing up and then we see in the later scene after pietro dies and sort of like before civil war it's like still like she still watches them it's sort of like it's a happy place something she can just yeah, it's relax like comfort. watching it's sort of like comfort yeah. food but it's like exactly comfort watching yeah and alex i think you brought up that someone theorized it that someone said that this is bec- this is happening because she used to watch sitcoms yeah, um, it's um throughout uh, her childhood. There was someone talking about it on um um uh well, well lots of people have been talking they've been talking mm. about it on Marvel Studio spoilers as um mm. yeah theorized thing that yeah she probably grew up watching them and we're probably gonna see a sequence like that. Sure enough, we did. We yeah. did, yeah. But then I saw um 
someone said that um i think it was yeah it was just after this week's episode someone had a post talking about it and then there was one comment someone said is that is this really that accurate you know is that is that a thing and someone said dude Dude, you've never been to Eastern Europe. They say like every every hotel you go to, everywhere you go, like there'll always be like always reruns those... of you know tons of different mm. you know American sitcoms from over the years playing there. And they said no, like this is for real. This is like this is a big thing in like sort of for like there's like, there's so many people like growing up in like all of the places. Sokovia not being a real place, but all the places mm. that Sokovia is inspired by. Like this is this is what childhood is like for a whole lot of people there. And so this is something of like leaning into that and as, as a story perspective in one division they said like that's that's just a really really cool thing mm. um, i saw um as a um uh 3d animator who i follow on twitter she was talking about the episode she said how like she said like it was um she said it was really quite shockingly nostalgic last night's episode for her cause yeah. she said like it was like um so much of reminding her of like what it was like uh, her family growing up she said like all the set dressing of you know mm. their their house as well was exactly mm. like her house she said difference not enough lace she said there wasn't there needs to be more <laughs> lace everywhere but then and she said and also like she said i get that you know it's sort of like from someone like disney they probably wouldn't be like um talking about they probably wouldn't be showcasing like sort of pirated media as much as they said no they should be like blank badly photocopied covers on the boxes with um with texture written on them with the names <laughs> and so on and, and not a tv but a laptop that they would be playing on but mm. other than that it was all like she said mm. like this is like i was just immediately transported back to growing up and <laughs> then so yeah it's really really interesting seeing that side of things like yeah it's something that it's just um yeah it's just um well it's something a lot of um western mm. audiences wouldn't have realized that this is like this is like this isn't just, you know, like an excuse for like, you know, all the sitcoms saying this is like, this is probably oh, yeah. a thing. You know, this is like, and that's yeah, how they learn English as well, which is such a good yeah. thing. Like the parents want it. Like, obviously it seems like they couldn't get an education for their kids during that mm. time. So they're like, how are they going to learn English? Yeah. Give them TV shows and something to enjoy. So it helps them learn English. Mm. So I think that was a really like sweet moment to see. And even it was just nice to have a face to the name of her parents. Cause we've yeah. heard so many times about her parents, obviously their death. And then just like, it's continuously brought up. So to actually see them, how much they loved her and even just Pietro and her as young kids, it was so sweet to sort yeah. of just see her life before everything went down. So it was, it was really nice to have that moment and go mm. back and see all that. The thing I was going to say, there's the second thing about the scene that has been a major talking point because it was like unexpected, kind of unexpected, but at the same time, mm. I kind of liked it. They brought this in is the fact that, that, you know, that the bomb sat there for two days, didn't go off. And that's something that's a story we've been told from the beginning. It's like, no, no, it didn't go off because Wanda stopped it from going off. Mm. And that whatever her abilities were for two days, she just held it at bay. And then that, that that I think was really cool yeah. to have that idea thrown in there that she's the reason she's so powerful is she didn't just get these abilities from the Infinity Stone. It's mm. that she's had magic potential her entire oh, life. Yeah. And then she's been supercharged by the Infinity Stone. Yeah, and because Stone. of the Infinity, in, in, yeah, Infinity Stone, it not only awakened it, but I think it just, yeah, like you said, Mitch, enhanced it. Mm tenfold as we saw later on in the episode but mm. we'll get to that the hydra scene i loved it as well like for as dark as it was but they made her look exactly like she did yeah. at the end of winter soldier i was like mm. you, but god damn like it looks so mm. good and i was really i, I was kind of hoping that we would see aaron yeah i, I love aaron johnson so much and he's just so so talented but I guess he was busy. So, yeah. so yeah. I, if he's not, if he's not in the final episode, he he'll be in Tenet. If I think. Oh right. yeah, that's true. yeah, that's probably why. If he's uh, if he's not in the final episode, he'll be in Doctor Strange. That's Maybe, my yeah. that's my theory. Oh. Um, but yeah, I was I was really hoping we get to see him briefly. Yeah. But but yeah, no that that scene. I said I was gonna say Elizabeth's hair has changed so much over the course of the series. I know. You know, it's like orangey look. red now. Yeah. <laughs> um every time her uh, accent changes her hair changes yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's so true but um yeah no that little moment and the idea that you know it's like i mean it seems like yeah i was now i was for now seeing what for perspective looked like for all the hydra people it was just like she was just sort of there something happened and then she collapsed and that's all mm -hmm. i saw 
Um, and then from her perspective, they're like it just it connected to her mm-hmm. the early stone. And that I'm, I'm curious to yeah, what happened to Pietro. I think he just like touched mm. it and just got supercharged. Um, and maybe they were both able to handle it and get the powers because he has some latent abilities just by being blood relative of her that they have yeah. similar sort of stuff but he doesn't have like magic stuff but he just has the he can he can ha- he can handle the power of an infinity stone enough to get abilities from same it. same way that yeah. peter quill could yeah exactly. yeah that's true peter, too, yeah. peter could hold the power stone yeah um so yeah i think that's probably he's like has just has some abilities latent abilities maybe just as a kid always had a really fast reflexes just something yeah, simple as that he's just like <laughs> he's got something mm. like that's always sort of been there but the the Infinity Stone supercharged it, but he didn't connect with it on the level that Wanda did. Mm. And getting that little moment of like when she saw into the Mind Stone, saw like <laughs> this this vision of what she should what she could become. That was my got... favorite moment because I've always wanted to see yeah. her with that headpiece. So yeah, just I seeing know. her come down like a goddess, I was like, oh my god! I'm just like screaming my head. I was Best not ex- like we had the Halloween costume, and we've known mm. that since the trailers. I was not expecting we're actually going to get the crown, yeah, like as like, part, of, <laughs> part of the yeah. outfit. And yeah, I have I have a whole theory about that. Ooh, um, go into it then. Right. So at the end of the episode, uh, Agatha finds out about everything. We'll, we'll come back to Agatha and everything with that. Mm, yeah. to talk about her, but Agatha finds out about what one did. Finds out the extent of her power. Mm-hmm. And you know, then she—that's when she starts to become openly sort of hostile towards Wanda, like threatening the kids, that sort of thing. And she says the whole thing about how you know, everything like, you're not supposed to be real. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the there's you're you're supposed to. You're, she says you're supposed to be a myth. You're supposed to be a yeah. myth. Yeah. So she's like, mm-hmm. she's not supposed to be. She's not supposed to exist. And I mm-hmm. thought we we're going in the direction of that, and we technically still are, I think. Uh, yeah, what, we so. talked about, what we talked about last week of the nexus beings mm. and that she's saying like one that she's in the myth of like she's a nexus being that you're yeah. not supposed to exist that sort of thing and finding out about that i think it's uh, that but that's not the main point here and i think mm. yeah and this is my theory going to dr strange 2 we are getting evil wanda at the end of this show and what's going to be is to use uh same as the last last week a star wars analogy with like wanda i was gonna say that the way yeah. I, was, I was gonna bring that up too <laughs> yeah with, with wanda being similar to anakin in that regard i'm gonna s- say what i think is going on and when she saw that vision of this image of her like in the full outfit with the, the crown and everything like that and it just occurred to me like why would she dress up like that like exactly. that's such a like deity like costume why as like a superhero costume would you just dress up like that? It's like no reason to have like that intense of a costume, which is, you know, it, it just doesn't seem like sort of thing she'd do. Mm. So my theory is that the, in this, yeah, using Star Wars analogy and everything, um, which is going to include spoilers for Clone Season 7, but, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is. Um, so Wanda is like Anakin and what she saw in the vision and what Agatha referred to, calling her, you're like, you know, you're supposed to be a myth, you're, your Scarlet Witch, that sort of thing, mm. is the Scarlet Witch is this foretold being, the same as how Vader is would be like this this thing. That like uh Wanda seeing that vision of the Mindstone was like Anakin on Mortis seeing the vision of what he's gonna mm. become. She saw the potential of what she could become is this evil being. Yeah. And that this evil being, and that's what Agatha's saying, is supposed to be a myth, this evil being destined for just destruction and death and just this chaos. unbelievably, yeah, chaos, this unbelievably powerful being. Yeah. And that is what Wanda has the potential to become and is probably going to become. And so then I see it as Agatha's maybe not completely like pure evil here. Mm. I think she's like, she's more in season seven. She's she she wants to kill Wanda before she becomes this. Being. Yeah, becomes this. Oh, that's and, true. Maybe and it's, that's what I think. It's that she doesn't want to like harness her power, or or maybe she wants to take kids, that sort of thing. But I think it's more she wants to kill Wanda before she becomes this evil being. Mm, that's maybe. gonna be unstoppable. I can see that being the case. Yeah. So now I'm thinking that potentially it's not gonna be. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure about Mephisto anymore. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Sadly, there's, there I'm is, starting to not believe in it anymore. There's a theory that Zan, you can get into in a bit that how he could be involved with this whole theory. I have. Oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a potential. I think there's there's quite possibly the potential of yeah, just straight up 
the main villain, and it will just be the main villain and the only villain, really. Or the you know, the main villain, Doctor Strange, is going to be Elizabeth Olsen as the Scarlet Witch. Is mm. this evil force that's like, you know, that's going to be that you know that will be um, the main antagonist that Steve is going up against. Uh, but you were researching last night, Xander, the potential thing of how a Mephisto-like figure mm. could be you involved that, in that. That image. Yeah, Cthulhu. Yeah. Mm. Um, so Cthulhu and Mephisto aren't like completely interchangeable as mm-hmm. characters, but it's um, I think um, because it depends what direction they want to go mm-hmm. in um in Multiverse of Madness, but um, one second, uh, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> All of the early rumors for the film back when it was first announced, back when Scott Derrickson was attached, he was sort of insinuating that Nightmare would be the main villain. We would be ah. exploring the Nightmare dimension, introducing that him been awesome. as like leader of it. And mm-hmm. there's a few people here and there suggesting that he also could turn up as he'll be the big bad in WandaVision mm. and so on. But then... <clears throat> looking at it all and like looking at what I was reading about last night about Cthon. I'll put his like, image yeah, up yeah. straight away now. The god of chaos, god of a chaos dimension and like sort of master of chaos magic, which is what powers Wanda. Yeah, um, that's what that's what Agnes called it, didn't she? Yeah, yeah chaos, chaos magic. magic. Yeah. And um but then at the same time you've got Mephisto who is Lord of Hell and like Lord of like sort of like um sort of like, you know, Punishment and like you know that mm. sort of thing, and then mm. Nightmare is head of Nightmare Dimension, but then Dormammu is the head of the Dark Dimension. I'm thinking there's lots of different ways I could go. There's like all the theories about whether Mephisto and Nightmare would be mixed together as characters. Mm-hmm. I'm now thinking could Nightmare, Mephisto, and Cthon be mixed together, or I'm thinking more likely would would it just be that they could maybe as like a little aside from everything in Multiverse of Madness introduce the idea of there being like this sort of pantheon of all of these different, you know, mm-hmm. elemental dimensions and, you know, their different rulers. We've already seen one of them, the Dark Def- Dimension and Dormammu. One of them would be whatever would be the MCU's equivalent of Hell with Mephisto mm-hmm. in charge of that. <laughs> Another one would be the Nightmare Dimension with Nightmare in charge of it. Mm-hmm. And then they could go the direction of having this sort of chaos dimension that, mm-hmm. is, you know, Cthulhu is the ruler of. But yeah, I'm I'm int- I'm intrigued to see them get into the mythology of the MCU because yeah. I reckon there's lots of because we're moving there. off into a very different territory of the MCU that we haven't ever seen before. And yeah. I was going to say just because you brought all those dimensions up, wonder what if like Wanda is like the head of all of it, and then she just like allows them all to kind of like break through the dimension. It's very far fetched, but that, I feel like that would be so cool, like an image of her being like head of all of it. And yeah, then all I mean, of these different lords of darkness and evil just being there and just being under her command would be so cool. I could I could see that potentially because of the idea of like she's the the main villain in Doctor Strange would become mm. the thing of like she's the most powerful one of all of these beings yeah. and you know they would be wise to answer to her, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean we uh, saw we're moving back into something that we thought we'd talk about later, but I want to talk about it now. The chaos magic that she released, like that's the yeah. magic that we see in other comic books and even in X Men and no, yeah, um, Wolverine and the X Men. That's the one. Um, that's what her magic looks like. It mo- looks more like dense, dark, and just like just absolute mm. chaos. So, and even the way she used it, the way she was like bent backwards and just releasing yeah. it all, that was scary. I was like, oh, but this is like an exorcism or some shit, but it's so cool. Um, so yeah, she really is the most powerful yeah. Avenger, not Avenger anymore, but like person out there in the whole entire universe. Mm. She's amazing. Uh, and on the subject of that, I gotta talk about obviously the thing of like, for one thing, the entire sort of sequence, the entire, entirely for the whole episode, um, you know, uh, Elizabeth killed it, oh, as yeah. usual, but especially this, this episode, episode. Emmy nomination, she better yeah. get it. I'm going to be angry if Marvel doesn't get anything for yeah. nominations. They deserve it for this one. Agreed. She, it was in, her performance looked really, really good. Beautiful. Um, and so we'll come back to the whole thing with her trying to bring Vision back to life. because. Mm, yeah. And what then happened with Vision's body? We'll come back yeah. to that. But um, the whole that whole sequence of like that she you know just goes to Westview and just that it's like oh you you evil writers just putting yeah. that idea in our head 
that the reason they're in West Year find that is Vision bought her a, a ha- place to build a house. Yeah. And they were gonna they were gonna settle down and together. It's just, in even, Westview. it's just that simple concept. Like, because obviously we're all theorists. The whole internet is a theorist, yeah. like plague yeah. of different theories. You know, like thinking it's Mephisto, it's this and that. But the simple thing was that she was alone and she just missed the man that vision that she loved and just wanted him back and it's just that simple thing and it's again sort of like what she spoke about too when they went to the flashback of her watching the sitcom with vision and she was saying it's that overwhelming like grief she can't get over it she doesn't know how to get over it Mm. so the lot the only thing she could do was just recreate that and whether it was unintentional intentional she just wanted to be happy at the end of the day. And I just felt my heart broke, especially when she went from color to the black and white and she's mm. finally smiling. I was like, oh my God, like my yeah. heart. I just wanted to sob because it was just so beautifully done and just the soft music and everything played the back. I was like, God, fuck you, my yeah. <laughs> my heart. <laughs> but yeah. so well done. Yeah, but just just the idea of that, that I like the, pre- the scene of... Um, mm when her and Vision are talking about, I know I love the idea. There was like a lot of people that complained, which I think is, yeah, not entirely, uh, not entirely unwarranted, but you know, it's like, it's, I, I never saw it as that big of a deal, but it is worth pointing out that, yeah, it could have been done a little smoother, but it, I didn't really care, but some people really didn't like it. The, the, the fact that Vision and one's relationship happened very quickly in the films, but that's just time. Yeah. Like, you know, that's just time. It's, it's, it's not like a TV show. Yeah, there's, there was two years they spent like getting to know each other between Age of Ultron and Civil War. It's just that we didn't have exactly. a story of showing see that. It. Yeah. So we had, you know, that progression and everything. Um, but I really like the idea and, you know, I completely buy into it. And I like it so much that, like, that, yeah, that um, the vision, like, helped her through the process of grieving for Pietro and that's when they started to connect, mm. you know? Yeah. And and they, they watched the sitcoms together. Yeah. And, like, so sweet. And then because, and then it's like, they would have watched the sitcoms together. And then because of that, he would have bought a, a house in a small American town mm. that they could have had that an ide- idealic oh. life in. Like, come on. And, this you know? yeah. and it, it would have happened during the period that we see at the start of Infinity War, if where yeah. is still on oh, the yeah. run because she's, you know, been like, you know, the, breaching the Sokovia Accords and so on. Yeah. Vision is sort of stepping away from the Avengers every now and then sneaking off to go and visit her and spend time with her but yeah. then at the same time on his own he's been sort of planning this whole thing of but yeah vision would be in the meantime during all of this would be deciding right okay i'm going to try and find a way to pardon her i'm going to like talk to whoever i can you know see what i can do to you know get everything you know all made right i'm going to like would have gone and found this town you know found okay let's see what can, we're going through all the official channels like how could how do i get this all in he's like just trying to get everything all set up to be perfect for her mm. and then you know next thing you know then you know then yeah. what happens <laughs> yeah but yeah it's just so it's just so like humane the reason yeah. why this all happened even just like the so many emotions that went through this whole yeah. episode was so like i don't know for me it was so relevant because like even when he was talking about like or wonder sorry was talking about grieving and stuff that's how I felt when I lost my grandfather because I was like 12 years old I didn't know what mm-hmm. these feelings were and I just felt so overwhelmed and I was like oh my god that's exactly how I felt and you know you just want to rewind time and all that crap like what she did if we had superpowers yeah. that's probably what yeah. we all would do um yeah. so that and was that really hit me really hard and afterwards I was just like crying because it was just like <laughs> yeah just, and it hit so hard and that like perfect line perfectly oh, delivered yes. by by Paul if was it um what is grief if not love persevering that uh, hit hard so, a lot harder yeah. than I thought it would that was so yeah. beautiful and just yeah I round of applause for Marvel they did mm. a really good job and just yeah. again keep surprising us every time <laughs> yeah but but I, I just love that little moment of like him just sort of you know that little heart to heart between them and it's like yeah he just sort of outlines all her yeah He's never known love. He has a lack of love. He he has a lack of love, but he doesn't feel grief. Mm. So therefore, grief. It, all the grief. Then therefore, what what is grief except love persevering? Because yeah. he doesn't feel grief. Even he's never known love, but he doesn't feel grief because he hasn't experienced it yet. When yeah. he when he w- does, that's when he would feel it. And that's what, and I like mm. that. It's just it's it's just I like I I just really like that. 
yeah, I, 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 do, I like that. I like that scene and like how he's like, he's trying to, he's trying to help, uh, you know, get over everything with Pietro. And it's like, he's going to, of course, what he's going to do, he's going to go the most literal way of dealing with that that he, you know, of like from a textbook of, oh, well, she needs to talk about it and that sort of yeah. thing. And <laughs> it's like, him. and he doesn't like really know what's happening, uh, like what to, how to help her. Mm. And then as the conversation just goes on, he just slowly starts to like connect with her more. And, mm. and I love the idea that between Age of Ultron and, um civil, civil war yeah that that she helped him be more human and be yeah. realize more of what life you know and yeah i really i really like that and i really like the i really like that as a sort of the beginning of their relationship is that yeah and i'm glad you know. we got a moment like that because even in the films we unfortunately because of the time we don't get those sort of moments like we don't yeah. get to like stop and just like sit in a moment with two characters or even just a group of characters unfortunately because of time and just keeping it on pace but like i'm grateful that we did get moments like this and even just this moment particularly between them it's just so nice and just yeah, I don't know. It just now it's starting to hit, especially after we talked about it last yeah. week. That Paul's journey is probably coming to an end of the MCU. Yeah, it's just mm. making me sad because I'm gonna miss him so much because I love yeah. the vision as well. So it's just gonna be really sad when he's not there. On on the subject of that, we gotta talk mm. about yeah the fact that something that I think I sort of I guessed as soon as we saw that she was unable to bring. The vision's body back to life mm -hmm. and that he's gone um is the idea that yeah it's like okay well if he's not gone if he's he's gone she can't bring back then the one in westview isn't isn't vision yeah it's yeah. like it's not it's not not physically vision at least it's not the same mm -hmm. vision and so then just the idea that this vision he's not made of vibranium he's not made of any physical matter he's just he's just been conjured by pure infinity stone power he's just the yeah. pure energy of yeah. the time the mind stone is what's made just him everything from her as well yeah just, yeah pouring all that into him it's just amazing that yeah. whole scene and just even oh, yeah. oh it was so well shot especially with that shot in the tv where you just see all the power just going into him it was just yeah. so well done just like that yeah. whole scene and as yeah can i think we saw already knew after uh uh two episodes ago when vision got outside the barrier we sort of already could assume this but then like just more confirmation of it that yeah he's he's not gonna be able to exist outside of the yeah. hex yeah and so once it's gone he's he'll die yeah and, and is, it's gonna be hard and then on top of that we've got yeah on top of that we've got um dark visions now here anti-vision yeah yeah also Hey, what is a jackass? I'm just gonna yeah. say that I absolutely yeah. fucking hate him. I'm yeah, say it's that. that. That's what I was like uh, realizing for the whole flashback scene. Oh, I can't see what's happening. Everything he's doing here, he just wants vision, and he knows that she has the potential to give them vision mm -hmm. again. Yeah. So, if Jesus Christ, I'll be back. <laughs> back to one division. Yeah, it's like totally everything Hayward did. He only wants the potential of vision, and that she's mm -hmm. like created created a vision and like or just is it, he just thought she could bring him back he just wants this weapon mm. and you know just and I, hope, I, and I hope he dies at the end of the show which he probably I will. So yeah, true. I feel because like he will the line that made me so angry was like i'm not gonna let you walk out of this room with three billion worth dollars worth of vibrating was like you piece mm. of crap like vision was like sacrificing himself to save everybody and this is what mm. you do you're making another yeah. weapon when he doesn't want to be a weapon just yeah i want to yeah. strangle him yeah no it, I, I guess it makes sense like yeah he's just he's technically unfortunate he's unfortunately technically u.s property and so yeah, as like is, we're, yeah. they would have to return him to to the government and everything yeah. because haywood was probably in sword at the yeah. time he probably was like oh this is my time to shine and just took vision's body and started yeah oh that scene where they were taking his body apart just made me so sad because like mm. i don't know we always see him as a robot but at the same time just seeing them taking him taking him apart was just so inhumane and just mm. ooh, just bleh, no and then when they yeah. started cutting into his head i was like no nah, wonder's going to crack and just yeah. yeah yeah there's one scene i took a screenshot of it because it's so pretty but like the scene where she's standing like above everybody yeah, and her hands are red just yeah. like oh and you can't even see yeah. her face it's just all in shadow which is so 
beautiful. Yeah. So I was like, yes. Just a lot of people were saying um, after last week's, last week's episode that, that they sort of didn't like the idea. As much as the scene is really good, I didn't like the idea that it was, you know, Agatha all along and that she did everything. And I didn't like that mm-hmm. idea. So it takes the blame away from Wanda. And I like that seemingly this episode is like, okay, well, that was a lie. She yeah, didn't yeah, do everything. It wasn't She's, Agatha all along. She, it was just she, Agatha poking at things so she could try and yeah. take control. And that is definitely like Wanda was the one to like, she created all of this. And she, mm. what surprised me is she created all of this, but up until at least this episode, um she's been saying the whole time no i didn't do this i don't i, I don't know how this happened i didn't do this but apparently no she did do this unless it i don't know unless it wasn't her to do it it was the scarlet witch did it yeah, yeah. the scarlet you witch know, that's 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 a that's oh, one i didn't i wonder idea what that... the, the personality of the scarlet witch is going to be though like obviously it's going to mm. be very dark but like i i just yeah i can't wait to see what's going to happen in the next episode because we are going in dark we know we sort of know what's going to happen there's going to be a big big battle but yeah, it's gonna inter- gonna be interested to see like which way things go. And yeah, Stephen better fucking turn up in the final episode. I swear I, I, he will. <laughs> he has to, or yeah. in a cut scene at the end. Like there has yeah. to be something. Yeah. Oh, and uh, really quickly, uh, yeah, uh, Pietro is real. We got yeah. confirmation of that because that was a good thing. Because <laughs> because was it like so? Like she said, she let let on that you know that. It's Pietro's here Pietro's here because of Agatha's sort of Agatha's powers. And it was like was one just said, was it it's it, it was you or something? And it sounded like she said just the eyes and the ears. So it was not like mm. simple simple possession spell or something. Yeah, so she if said she used necromancy. Yeah. So it's as if it's simple like you know, possession spell, then he's a real person mm. that she's yeah. just controlling. Yeah. So that means he's definitely he's real and you know she, he has to he had yeah. come from somewhere. And she you did know. say that the one that she wanted to use was on a different plane full of holes. So, yeah, so that's why she like couldn't get that Pietro. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why. So, yeah, he's, he's, yeah, because he's dead and she can't just bring him back. So she's got, she found one. Mm. Yeah. So it's it seeming like, yeah, okay, it's definitely going to be he's the, he's that Pietro. Yeah, he's that Pietro. <laughs> he's not like just, you know, he, he's actually the X-Men universe, mm. uh, Peter. Um, so I was glad to hear about that, which I think uh, is more sort of the idea that was it uh, you suggested Xander the idea? Oh, you, you and a bunch of people like on the uh, Marvel subreddit were talking about the sort of thing of like the notion of what if the guest the guest star is this big the guest star thing? What if it's Patrick Stewart as Charles? I've got um. Uh, oh. uh, there's a newer mm-hmm. theory I've seen lots of people going around of them saying yeah. What if it's that Paul really is just like yeah. Um, that's- what if he's done like just the biggest troll ever and like yeah the big guest star the big famous guest star that he's been a fan of for all his life and he's wanted to work with all it's his Paul life it's, it's just it's him Paul Bettany. yeah <laughs> imagine i'm gonna be so pissed because we came up with al pacino we came up with some other people yeah yeah and kessie was saying gary oldman and i was like maybe but now it's seeming like yeah. it's just yeah. paul yeah <laughs> i i think there will be something um, I did. The, I did love the Patrick Stewart fear and everything, but it occurred to me that well, Michael Fassbender would make more sense for having Peter's books You know, yeah, yeah. Because it would, mm-hmm. it whatever. But yeah, the Ghost of Fail episode. Um, I'm pretty sure that yeah, Stephen will turn up, and uh, good good Vision will be having to fight against Evil Vision, and probably ultimately have to sacrifice himself to destroy mm-hmm. both of them. Yeah. So that his his body can't be used by by you know Anybody, corrupts yeah. people and turn into a weapon anymore and he has to be destroyed anyway because he won't be able to leave Westview. Mm. So yeah if he like sacrifice himself and he he destroys he destroys uh himself and the other vision. And I still definitely do think that yeah if it's hundred percent gonna be Evan Peters is yeah Peter from Exxon movies, which it seems like very much will be that he'll stay with Steven going into Doctor Strange that they'll he'll be with Steven. I hope help. he'll stay. Yeah. Because mm. he'll be like, you know he just knows that yeah there's this the, this woman here that's like she's not his sister but they're kind of like yeah. she's like his sister from a different universe or something and that you know there's all this horrible stuff's happened to her and that you know i i don't know like he he might think like that the the peter from this the pietro from this universe his like doppelganger so would want him to help her yeah and so if he's like if he stays with steven to like you know to 
to go and help her. I really hope he gets to see that. Um, just because I think that's the sort of thing he'd probably do. Yeah, and, I think so too, yeah. And I also think that wasn't is it it was uh on Marvel subreddit and like and we can't like you know confirm this but it was like was it there's a bunch of uh, people rumor, uh, rumors about the whole thing that yeah we're gonna he's gonna be woken up by Westview Vision and then we, we're gonna get a Quicksilver scene yeah at some point <laughs> the, the thing that a lot of people are suggesting is they'll have a like there'll be a big scene of when it's like the hex is collapsing or whatever and mm. it's like well somebody's gonna have to get all of the people out of here. Who specialize mm. in that sort of thing? It's Peter. Uh, Steve, then, uh, uh, um, yeah. So I was gonna say, yeah, Vision wakes up Peter, and then Stephen like sort of Stephen's like holding the breach to the hex open, just yeah. get, get get everybody out of here, and then that's when <laughs> Peter's gonna <laughs> get everyone out. <laughs> yeah. But then but, suppose mm. there's some people um, saying that what it, how the scene could be is it's Peter going along doing everything with Tommy as well. Mm. And it's yeah. sort of as as they're going along, he's sort of like Tommy's trying to help. Like Tommy's you. a little a little bit behind, you know. He's not as mm. fast. He's not as like sort mm. of not quite as in control of his powers as Peter is. But Peter's sort of just showing him out, mm. like sort of showing yeah. the ropes as they go through it. Yeah. Hold the neck, hold the neck, or get whiplash. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you know, <laughs> so make sure you hold the neck. Maybe he doesn't do it for one person. And they're like, oh, bleh. okay. <laughs> so you hold, you gotta hold the neck. You know? <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I, th- I think someone said, was a, you mentioned that someone said that, and like, you know, you know, no idea about this, but someone said that, someone said that they, uh, they, they've edited, apparently they've edited the scene with Sweet Dreams as the temp track, and not oh. sure what song they're going to use, but they uh, have edited it with that as the, the temp track, so we'll have the same sort of vibe. Of it. yeah. It's, it's even like a live music. And I think if it's, if it, it'll, it might be a modern song, actually, if it's Ooh. like, yeah. if it, or a semi modern song, if it's, oh, but then again, I did, I did, I, I did, it did occur to me that it might still be an 80s song because it's, mm. it's Peter from the 80s. So Is you might I still need have an to 80s hear song. Because I feel like that would be a cool yeah. song. <laughs> yeah, that's 80s. Yeah. That could work, actually. I feel like that would be cool. <laughs> but, but yeah, I'm excited the idea of another quick solo scene and like, yeah, and that would be such a cool moment because it would solidify that. Yep, this is this is hundred yeah, percent. This, is, the, this, is, this yeah. is the Peter you know from the X Men movies. You know, here in the MCU, and if he's interacting with yeah, Paul as Vision and and Benedict as Doc Strange, like in that yeah. scene, that would be really really cool. That'll be so awesome. Yeah. Uh, cool. Also, one one random thing just to get to me is that yeah. I, I think that if you know if it's all going ahead with the Spider Man in uh, Spider Man Three, oh, sorry, I I can say now No Way Home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, <laughs> we finally got a name. That's a wait a whole day. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, but that I'm actually really happy with that title. I think it's, it sounds. Yeah, I think it's good. It, yeah, it it sets up the idea. This idea, this is going to be a massive, disastrous situation yeah. for Peter, and that you know, yeah. stuff is going to go wrong with all of this. Sort of, it's it's it it makes you think of the idea of like this is a, a there's a no way back from this. Scenario. Yeah, there's so there's like no on. way. No way yeah. home. Yeah. Yeah. Technically, I said, yeah. I, I, and I said, with the idea of Stephen making everyone, well, yeah, everyone forgetting about his identity, having to do this magic spell to make that happen. Mm. Uh, as I said, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I was saying, Xander, I want it to be an end game situation of yeah. everything going on, everything's going badly, Peter's life since the series come out. It's like, there's only one way to fix this. Yeah. There's no other choice that he can make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that everyone Yeah, I feel like Peter's mm. gonna be put into a situation where he's gonna be like, like maybe I don't know, maybe Doctor Strange says it a little bit beforehand in the movie and says, This is probably your only choice. And he Peter's like, No, I have too much yeah. on the line. I've got like, you know, MJ, I've got all my friends, I've got uh May and da da da. You mm. know, he's because he has this full circle of support around him. He doesn't mm. want to lose it. But yeah. then I think when it comes maybe to that final yeah, again, like end game sort of situation where it's like final battle, fighting, 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 endless fighting. It's not stopping. It's getting to the point where Peter's on the maybe on the verge of death. He's mm. literally just exhausted, and then he sort of like gets into a safe position with um, Steve and Stephen, and then says, "We need to do it. We need yeah. to erase everybody's memory of me." Yeah, but it's yeah, just the idea. <laughs> yeah, oh, now the I'm idea- just scared. The idea of the scene being like, yeah, it's, there's there's only one way to keep everyone safe, yeah. and he has to make this choice. Um, also, it's like I, I saw a thing. It was this, uh, a quote from Tom for an article the other night about someone saying, "Was it? I think it was last night actually." Someone said like, "There was there was a quote of something from him about an interview he did where he said something like, 
uh, going forward with Spider Man stuff, he said that you know, I think that he he's of the it's not like he's of the opinion that with more Spider Man stuff, it's got to be the same team, you know, of you know, John Moss directing and then you know, uh, him, Jacob, and Zendaya and everything. Thought that doesn't really line up with some of my ideas, the idea of her forgetting him. Before. But then again, they could just be keeping that plot element for time. Oh, yeah, they probably you know? have to, they have to make it seem as normal as possible, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so, he could just be, he could just be, he, he, could just, yeah. he could just be a really good liar all of a sudden, you know, yeah. <laughs> and he's just, but, um, yeah, I think, I think we'll get some more plot elements about Spider-Man, um, whether it could be something, I said, like, the, the, the dream would be something like, we see Electro coming through a portal mm-hmm. or something like that, that'd be the dream of, like, you that'd know, cool. like, setting up everything happening, I think it could be something simple as, it could be something like a brief clip from Spider-Man, like Peter's court case or something, mm. it, but they're only just shooting that yeah, seemingly, so probably not that. It could be, yeah, it could be a clip like that, or it could just be like a a, uh, a post credit scene, something about how like all these like a news report or something about you know this you, Peter Parker, the you, the, the, the you know the mass vigilante knows Spider Man is still on the on the on the run, mm. you know something like that, just just setting up. Yeah, maybe we see that, happening. and then maybe someone's watching it, and we see a, a particular supervillain, maybe that we haven't seen. What I think could be cool, something very simple, could be like we're seeing this news report or something, like maybe like mm. a like a shop with some bunch of TV, TVs at the front, and you seeing like yeah, that sort of there. That's what I was thinking. And you're seeing like that sort of TVs there, and as a report goes along, and then they start to glitch, like sort of one division style. They start to like just yeah. Spider Verse style, just starts to like glitch or something, like something's wrong. <laughs> And then we sort of it glitches a bit, and then sort of gets like the, the peak of the glitching. And then we just cut mm. back to credits, and that's that. That's yeah. the end of the post credit scene with Spider Man. Anything else I wanted to mention? We haven't talked about Salem yet. And Agatha. Salem. Oh yeah. Ah! Um, yeah. Really, really loved that little opening loved scene. Loved that whole and scene. Getting to see a little bit more of the kind of um, even though that I there's no like direct connection to him, getting to see like a little bit more of the world building of like the um the Masters of Kamatage and seeing mm. a little bit of a connect a. Little, little bit of relation to them in like the coven uh mm. salem and like sort of setting up the idea of the yeah it's not just exclusive to camatage they're like you know there's probably thousands of sorcerers you know all over the world in the mcu and has been for they have been for hundreds of years and then um i know there's, like, there's some people theorizing about the idea of um i think it's i reckon because it's a good question of um Agatha's fate. What's her fate mm. going to be like sort of after after One Division? I reckon they're gonna keep her around because it's sort of I mean, you look at how much of a fan f- favorite character she's become over the last few weeks and it's just lots of potential for Agatha as a character to as I saw some people say, fill the same sort of Loki role of mm. like, you know, she's sort of not quite a villain, not quite a hero. But like, sort of, just she's just around every now and then, so like getting caught up in different stuff, yeah. and like you know having like different schemes and so on. But I saw some people theorizing theorizing about the idea of like if she was to die at the end of of the series, they said, what if she what if she gets killed by Mordo? Because Ooh. you know he's going around executing sorcerers, and you know if he comes after her. But maybe um, <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say that um, I think if. Uh, if Agatha was to be killed by anyone, I think it'll be Wanda. Oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 Definitely, definitely, and, definitely. And, and I, I, I don't know if she'll be killed, um, killed off too quickly, but I do like the idea kind of like, you know, Agatha's got the the whole plan to, you know, to take her down before she comes to Scarlet Witch or something. And then, like, right as she, like, snaps or whatever, she just, like, he, you know, like she just goes to kill Wanda and Wanda just like sort of just just levitates her up and just mm-hmm. sort of, you yeah. know, just just the idea that she as soon as she tries to, um, you know, as soon as she tries to like to attack Wanda, Wanda's just the the dark the dark side of her kicks in and she's just yeah. able to defend herself. Effortlessly. I think so. I think maybe Agatha before Wanda snaps, if she does, I feel like she will. But like, if she does snap, I feel before that, I think Agatha will be able to hold her own against Wanda with mm. her magic. But then, I think Wanda will snap, and then that's when she's gonna get scared and be like, "Oh my god! Mm. Like I can't fight her mm. with my magic." So, yeah, either she's gonna die or she's gonna flee. But I mm. feel like I don't know. I feel like she might die, but I don't want her to because I've started to like her. But um, I've got a th- I've got a theory about what could happen to her, and it's sort mm-hmm. of 
I was already thinking of this before, but then I reckon after um, yesterday's episode, I'm sort of even more thinking this. I reckon um, she's going to, like, something will happen. She'll try, like, sort of, like, I don't know, like, trying to absorb power from Wanda or something. Ooh. And Wanda will do what Agatha did in at the start of yesterday's episode and flip it back on her. Oh, and, dra- and drain shit, her a little bit. Maybe. And then she'll end she'll end up she'll survive it. She won't die from it, but she'll end up in the kind of withered sort of husk. That sort makes sense. Yeah, the way actually. she actually yeah. looks at the comics. Oh my god. That makes yeah. sense. That makes okay. sense. I buy yeah. that. That's I, what I yeah, I also happen. buy that. Because I thought when we saw the beginning of that Salem part, I thought that woman with the white hair was Agatha and she was gonna yeah. like maybe transfer herself into a younger body, but then that was her mm. mom. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe that's not her then. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why I was a little confused, but I like that idea of Wanda draining her and making her look really old, but she I somehow actually. survives, yeah. maybe. So that would be cool. But yeah, I wanna see, I'm really intrigued to see um, all of like, more of this whole side of the MCU that we're seeing, like, and how, like, it's, I mean, it's already, like, all the multiverse stuff, you know, we already know we're getting more of that <clears throat> in Doctor Strange, but I'm looking forward to seeing more of this sort of, like, you know, this dark magic and, like, you yeah. know, all these sort of, you know, ancient sorcerers and, you know, different curses and, you know, and stuff. It's like, I want I want to see that. That'll be really yeah. cool. And that's why I want more of, like, Mephisto and, who was that other guy you said, sir? Um, Cthon? Yeah can't say his name <laughs> yeah. um but just more of those sort of characters that are just so mytho- mythological that you can't even think that they're real i just mm. want to like have more characters like that that's why i kept saying mephisto because it's like yeah. we've never had anyone like him before and he raised the stakes higher but i don't think we will i i don't think we'll have him but i think we'll have someone who's sort of like a mixture of all these different yeah, yeah, yeah dimensional beings be together and i wonder since you know the realities are changing now if we actually get to see a visual of those like re like more of that visual of reality sort of like merging or even dimensions sort of like opening and stuff i sort of would like to have a visual of it but if there's not Mm -hmm. i'm not going to make a fuss of it but i don't know i would love it if just like portals just started like ripped ripping through the sky and stuff like that that's sort of my vision of it but yeah Mm -hmm. i would love to see that yeah i I yeah, I definitely think things are gonna go. Things are gonna get pretty pretty crazy mm. after it's like things aren't gonna be right. Yeah. after everything that happens um, ne- uh, next week, and I think it'll perfectly set the stage for all the the chaos leading into Spider Man and Doctor Strange. Definitely. One question: How long do you mm. think the episode's gonna be? I hope uh, it's an hour long. I hope Plus, it's long. I don't want a short episode. There's some people. Someone said that it's going to be, they reckon it's going to be longer than an hour, like about 70 minutes. Or something. I saw someone, someone said yesterday that, um, oh, no, I'm sorry, they said earlier today that it's going to be 50 minutes. Oh, that. yeah. I'm, I'm not like, against the 50 thought, minute episode. Yeah, it's like, I reckon it'll be, it'll probably be a little bit longer than yesterday's episode, but I, I don't think it'll break an hour. Mm. How long um, was yesterday's? 40? 47. Oh, nice. Which was like 10 minutes longer than last week's Mm. episode. So, um, because, yeah, I mean, like, there's some people are theorizing it'd be like up to like an hour and a half, even, or like Mm -hmm. sort of, but I think, um, I think that's a bit too long for sure. So maybe like an, maybe an hour, maybe 10, an hour 10, maybe just to hit that sort of like, yeah, like that mark. Because now, as we saw with the credits, it's no longer that sitcom style sort of Mm. thing. Like, we didn't have to please stand by anymore. So, we might have a longer episode next week. And I, I hope so, because then it sort of covers all these different areas that we sort of have questions with, but also cover all the action that we've been waiting for. It's gonna we be... do have a lot of bases to cover next week. Like, yeah. Exactly. You know. So we got to cover a lot, and they got to do it with so short amount of time. But I reckon they'll mm. do it. They can do it. Thank you for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the episode. See you all next week. And for the children. For the children. For the children. Bye, everybody! Bye.